Barton on the line here, but this is Barton Scott. So this is our second podcast interview. Our first one, Barton was teaching us about minerals and why they matter so dang much, um, how they affect our hormone status, how they are these little intricate things that actually make our bodies work the way they're supposed to. And so today we are talking post uh, hair mineral status test with Tara. So I got my results back and it was actually kind of hard, Barton, because we were like, hanging out all weekend at KetoCon. And I'm like, ah, I want to pick your brain like so bad about the results. But you were like, I haven't even looked at it yet. I'm waiting to do it live on the podcast. So that is what we're going to do now. So uh, uh, Barton, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you take the reins here and, and tell me all about myself and all the things I didn't know before this hair test. <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, first of all, I just want to start off by saying you're really healthy. Uh, so don't, uh, and and for everyone listening, anytime you, you look at a diagnostic test, just remember why you're doing it. Remember that you're trying your goal. What is your goal ultimately? It's to be to become even healthier, right? Yeah. And so I know you, you don't really have this issue, but a lot of people will kind of stress about their results, right? Yeah. And there's always room for improvement. If there wasn't, there'd be no room, there'd be no reason to do the test, right? So just that sort of disclaimer up front, I think is helpful. Um, so your, your results came back and yeah, just like everyone, there's some room for improvement. Um, of course you do a lot of, a lot of work on yourself. You're really knowledgeable. So you already have a baseline. Uh, so there's some things we could skip, uh, since we're, we're trying to do this, you know, in a fairly tight manner. Um, I'm going to run through the page two, which is significant ratios. Um, and there are seven significant ratios that we really, really care about. These seven uh, ratios drive pretty much everything in the body. Um, and then we, we can talk about heavy metals. I, I know you had a question about tin as, as well, and I think I have a good answer for you there. Okay. Um, we'll touch on that. Um, actually, you, if, if you want to address that now, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Um, tin is found in hydrogen peroxide often. And hydrogen peroxide, a lot of women use it as a dyeing agent in bleach, right? Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. almost always in, found in bleach. And, um, or it, it certainly can be. So that's, that's some okay. help there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, one of the biggest things I noticed that was like on my heavy metals. And of course, like I was, I was actually really excited to see what my metals would come back at because I did that DNA analysis with Anthony J who was also at KetoCon. It was so cool. Like having both of you guys there. I'm like, Oh, it's like biochemist party. <laughs> like, so checking on like the, what you're predisposed to. And then you're coming in and being like, and this is actually what's happening. Um, really, really cool. But he told me that I had a very high susceptibility, susceptibility to having heavy metals in my body. So I, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised it wasn't worse than it was after that. But my tin, T, like T-I-N, and this is why these tests are so interesting because like I was like, 10? What? <laughs> like that was the last thing in the world I was expecting to see. You know, I was like, oh, am I going to have like lead or mercury or some of these more common ones you hear about? And it was like 10 was through the roof. So that was a big question of mine. I'm like, and, and I totally did. I admit, I totally went down the rabbit hole of exactly what you were saying not to do. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm full of tin. What have I done? Like, what am I doing in my life? That's made me have all this tin in my <laughs> body. And then you're like, uh, it's just your bleach because you're bleaching your hair. It was just actually in your hair. So that's why it's nice to have like a professional like you, like help and the understanding. And that's part of the reason we're doing these podcasts. So people make become aware and get educated on some of these things. So, um, thank you for putting my mind at ease on that. Certainly. Certainly. Yeah, so uh, should we go into the metals? Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, dive into so page two. Your some some results here. Basically, if we I always look for the eighty um, twenty rule uh, and apply it to this. So we're going to look at this as the eighty percent. That if we make some changes to this, uh, other things in the body drop out. So you have um, a little bit of uranium but it's within reference range. That's the only one. Now, commonly that sounds scary, but uh, because we've been programmed a certain way, uranium is found in drinking water often. It's found in soil often, uh, root vegetables sometimes. Um, 
And the way that the way that comes out is in part when you get the body remineralized and balanced really well, um, it you really do start to excrete a lot of these things over time, um, because the body is essentially energy potential. And when you raise it and fill it with other things, other things drop out. Now, from Ayurveda, um, there's also understanding that you can increase Agni, which is digestive strength. Uh, which everyone can pretty much benefit, not everyone, but many people. Uh, that is done with something like celery juice and bitters. You do that for a little while, and then you start supplementing bentonite clay, silica from mm. diametaceous earth, and then bent- uh, um, um, uh, activated charcoal. So those mm. three, so activated charcoal, bentonite clay, diametaceous earth for that silica. You can take them all, all at once. You want to do it not around a meal, and that'll pull out... I mean, you really don't have anything to worry about in the heavy metals, but I just wanted to tell people that generally. That's that's really the detox protocol I recommend generally. And that can be, you know, uh, six weeks, so that can be a year plus. It just depends. So. Do you happen to know if, because I have bentonite clay from Redmond, real salt, and I love that stuff. And I would like... I keep it in my bathtub area and I'll like just <laughs> like rub it all over my skin, like during the bath or whatever, and just kind of like let it dry like a mask. I'll put it on my face and like on my arms and everything. Um, do you know if putting it on your skin is helpful enough or do I need to actually ingest the bentonite clay? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I would say that it should help with, with skin condition, you know, with like removing, say you just sweat it a lot or something, you don't, or you have some pores that are getting clogged. So helping the skin de- is our is our main way of detoxifying. So that that is probably a good thing. I would also ingest it though. Ingest it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we have a little Redmond has a. Oh, sorry. Redmond has a farm uh, here. I was just going to say, if I could do only do one, I, I would ingest it. Okay. Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, okay. All right. So jumping into these ratios, we have seven of them: uh, calcium to phosphorus, sodium to potassium, calcium to potassium zinc to copper, sodium to magnesium, calcium to magnesium, and iron to copper. So there's, uh, there's seven different ones to cover in detail. Um, I'm sure that, I know at some point I need to do a whole online training to be able to train nutritionists um, and trainers how to look at this, if, if nothing else, how to just understand ratios. Um, but because the value is, is just much greater than if you look at something on its own. So if you look at, oh, well, um, it looks like I'm low in potassium or, oh, it looks like I'm low in sodium, you can really start to get the wrong idea. And this is more the extended discussion where we're, when we're sitting poolside, poolside after the conference, I was like, all right, that's a lot to dive into. Let's save it for later. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, so, here we- so, yeah, here we go. So uh, calcium to phosphorus. Now, the ideal range there is about 1.8 to 3.6. You're sitting at 2.2, which is really good. Um, there is calcium to phosphorus. Uh, basically, this is a neurological dominance indicator. So phosphorus, that's controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, calcium is controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, no, no uh, other place do you hear people kind of break that down. It seems like, mm-hmm. at least that I'm familiar with. Uh, but basically, that has uh, a role in under in kind of providing a, a pretty clear picture on what's happening with your thyroid, what's happening with your adrenals. Um, basically, you know, thyroid and adrenals; those are sympathetic endocrines. So, one thing we are seeing um, as we as we look at this is that. Your metabolic place is is in a pretty good in a pretty good place. Um, it's better than normal. Uh, there's some room for improvement, but you're you're listed right now currently, and this can always be changed and improved. Is uh, fast four, so fast metabolizer. So you're. I'm just going to mention this briefly, and we'll jump back in. Um, so you're seeing a reduction in sympathetic endocrine act- activity. Um, yeah. So. All right, so the sodium to potassium. So we're looking at that. That comes out as uh, 0.5. So ideal there, Sarah, is 2.4 to 1, so a little bit low there. Mm-hmm. Um, the, range, the ideal range would be 1.4 to 3. So, again, 
kind of on the lower end, uh, we've talked about this a little bit already for the call, but basically low, a low ratio here uh, can indicate that uh, renal function could actually be improved. So um, it's not so out of whack that I would, I would demand, like you must get your, your you know, kidney tested. But um, it's something to think about, especially if you see other, other things you can connect that with, like, huh, I wonder if, you know, and then fill in the blank type thing. So, um, and I, I would say, again, fairly common, not a red alert thing, but something to be aware of. So what's your, what's your suggestion from like a lifestyle, um, supplements, food, uh, do you have any recommendations on that, on supporting and bringing yeah. that ratio? Certainly. Certainly. So we'll get to, we'll get to a, um, and this will make more sense if, if I, uh, do, I can discuss recommendations kind of one by one, or I could discuss them all at the end. Um, okay. You but one thing is that, yeah, in this case, we'll do sodium in divided doses. So okay. you know, one teaspoon of sodium is roughly 220 milligrams. And I would, I would say for as active as you are, you want to consume at least as much uh, as that, at least one teaspoon throughout the day. So not all at once, but maybe, you know, in three different doses. So, and I always salt my water too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, I have started a, uh, I, I've done that, but not consistently. And now since I got this, it's great because I'm just like, oh, yeah, make, let's make sure we get the salt in our water. And, um, and and my coffee, too. I've been doing it. It makes your coffee taste really good. It's like an old coffee house trick that they used to do with cheap coffee. Um, and it also just even if you have really nice coffee, it makes it taste amazing. So I've been adding that, too, since coffee is kind of a diuretic. So mm, that's yeah. a great idea. I do that, too. If, if I do grass fed ghee. I'll put butter in it and it just, ghee wakes up whenever you, you put a little salt in it. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's see. That's a great tip for people though. It is diuretic. All right. So the other, other one we want to look at the third, number three is your calcium to potassium. So that's sitting, um, you know, it's, it's, I would say this is one of the larger indicators here that we, we want to move to correct. Um, and the way we'll balance it is actually with calcium, I'm sorry, with magnesium. So right now you're at 18 to one and you can use magnesium to balance this already. I've already shipped some out to you, by the way. <laughs> uh, so it's on its way. You should get it soon. Like Sunday, uh, some upgraded magnesium, which will, you'll actually really absorb, which of course, you know, uh, at the cellular level. So you'll start to be able to impact. Uh, some of these changes pretty quickly. So that yeah. is one of the recommendations. I can't wait to try that and see what happens because I've been taking magnesium glycinate for quite some time, yeah. but I know like with my high stress levels from work and being a mom and also like I'm training all the time and running around like crazy, like um, I'm excited to see what happens when I start taking your nanotechnology magnesium and how this number, how it affects this number. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'm, I'm excited for you as well. And that's, that's really, that's part of it. Something else to keep in mind, it's not a digression, it's something important to, to really state is um, you're doing so much. I, you know, I have a good feel for your, your lifestyle. You are really doing a lot. I mean, so am I. And when you do, when you live a life uh, that way, you just have to treat yourself like a race car. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you do. And this is, this is just kind of further in that way. So it's, it's, um, what does a race car need? You need more often refueling of certain things. It uh, doesn't mean you have to eat all the time, obviously, but uh, certain things your body needs maybe more often or in larger doses. And of course, you always need to absorb it or it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I always say, like, I think somebody said, I'm not sure if this number is right, but I've heard that LeBron James spends like a million dollars a year on recovery modalities. And I think about, you know, I've definitely gotten that picture from like a training standpoint. I love like cryotherapy and infrared sauna and all the, you know, intravenous IV vitamin infusions and all that stuff. But I, I haven't really 
it hadn't really hit home to me, honestly, until I did this test and found these ratios that like from my entrepreneurial business standpoint, I also need to be like hyper recovering from that stress as well. Right. So this was kind of a, a wake up calls like, OK, wait, 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 I'm not just performing at a high level from a fitness standpoint, I'm also doing it from like an emotional standpoint for work and that needs to be supported too. So I love your race car analogy. And I, somebody said once, um, there's no such thing as over training. There's just such thing as under recovering. And I thought, I thought that was a cool mindset switch, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so it's like, yeah, you can, you can perform at a high level, but you definitely have to be supporting it. So, um, thank you for this because that's, this was like kind of, it was a bit of a wake up call of like how much more I need to support my, uh, <laughs> high achieving lifestyle. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So one more quick note on calcium to, um, potassium before we move on. So calcium is, you know, since it's higher than we want it to be currently, uh, one thing that I, I asked patients at this point is what's your, you know, what's your vitamin D levels like uh, if you've search, if you've done that recently because although your calcium is low I'm, I'm guessing are you are you supplementing vitamin d currently I suppose. so that's really awesome that you just asked that because on i am um but i'm yeah. not super consistent with it but i like i probably do 5000 i use maybe two to three times a week um but i also on my dna test with anthony um, I have like both copies of my gene to process vitamin D are bad. So he's like, you need way more vitamin D than other people so that are the normal. So that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Well, what, what I would say is again, that genetics is a, it's a, it's a suggestion of what should be going on in your body. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't take into account, obviously what, what you're eating, mm -hmm. what you're eating, what your lifestyle is. Mm -hmm. So it's a great baseline, and I think it's it's ideal to do exactly what we're doing, where we're looking at that, and then we're looking at well, what's going on for the last six six weeks in the body, mm -hmm. and um, what I would say right now, my recommendation personally is that go out, get some sun exposure. You'll probably absorb that better anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but you right now we do want to work to bring calcium down in the body. That's going to give you more energy more mood like you already are always so positive but it's going to increase your mood even more um increase right. your energy it's going to currently right now you're looking at um although it's not severe there's there is pretty confidently some calcium deposition that's happening in muscle tissue uh, so that can lead to stiffness uh and things like that so mm. so you're saying uh, the way to reduce calcium in the body is vitamin d uh, well, yeah, so to let, let me back up a step. So I, I, I didn't explain that super clearly. What I would say is that, um, well, the understanding is that whenever your calcium level, uh, so basically vitamin D causes calcium absorption to go up, right? And since we, although your calcium level is not high, what, what we're really most concerned with is the ratio of that to other things, right? Okay. Um, so because it is high compared to, it's not high overall, but it's high compared to potassium. Mm. Um, what we want to do, and that, this, by the way, what I was going to say is it, it reduces, th right now you're showing uh, a reduced thyroid expression, which by the way, so is most, so are most people. Uh, mm. So again, everything like understanding how you fit into a bigger picture and not just going, oh my gosh, mm. I, I've got to run and fix this. And this is so, mm -hmm. so crucial. There's some mm -hmm. things to optimize, but just wanted to, again, set, hold that frame for that. Um, but yeah, so vitamin D causes calcium to be absorbed. So I, I would, uh, for the next, uh, certainly for the next 30 days, see how you feel with no, no vitamin D supplementation anyway. My guess is kind of a waste of money potentially for you, given your DNA uh, anyway, to actually supplement it. Mm -hmm. So uh, yep. if you're going to get it, do it that way. Uh, and when you do take it, take it in the presence of magnesium and B6. But uh, to, I know we're short on time, so I'm going to move on real quick to okay. zinc and copper. Okay. So we're at 13.6 for zinc and copper. Ideals between 4 and 12, so you're a little on the high end. That's going to suggest, I'm going to run through this a little quickly, it's going to suggest a uh, progesterone, and, uh, progesterone and testosterone dominance relative to estrogen. 
Um, so I know you know a lot in that area, so um, we can move on or, you know, um, I think I'll, I'll just move on to the, the sodium and magnesium right now. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, so right now, uh, sodium and magnesium, yeah, I'm glad you, you got it pulled up so it's right yeah. there in the top left corner. Yeah, so sodium and magnesium is, is sitting at uh, 0.48. Um, so we're, we're a bit low in sodium. The ideal range is two point is uh, two to six. So we're at 0.48. This, what does this mean? Well, this represents a reduced adrenal expression. And this was a big shift for me personally. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll just say this to kind of set the groundwork. Big shift for me personally. I'd read a lot of things about never supplementing um, adrenal glandulars from, from cows. Uh, and eventually, uh, I started looking at this, I, I would do a hair test, I would redo a hair test and it was the same pattern over and over and over for about a year. I was like, you know what? I am going to give it a shot. I'm going to do like one, one bottle, see how I felt. I, and it, it really moved the needle for me. Mm. So this is something that most I would say most of my patients can benefit from is adrenal glandular. I like grass fed. Um, I don't think it should be done in perpetuity without checking. I don't think anything should be done without in perpetuity without checking up on your health with a test uh, periodically. But so I'm, I'm saying like once a quarter or more often. Okay. The Ancestral supplements, they, that's a brand I like because they're grass-fed and they have the cortex and the medulla. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. I will get some. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That so, was the so. biggest one that stood out to me on this. I, was, <laughs> I emailed you back. I was like, well, excuse me while I go take a nap and, <laughs> and have some salt bath <laughs> and drink some salt water. <laughs> exactly. Okay, thank exactly. you. That's a great tip, too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see. So next would be uh, calcium to magnesium. So we're sitting at 16.6. The, the ideal range here is 3 to 11. So again, on the higher side, mm -hmm. being on that higher side suggests instead of thyroid, we're suggesting parathyroid dominance. And what that often goes hand in hand with is lower adrenal cortical hormone production. So when you have that lower adrenal production, um, you address it just like we talked about. So this is why I'm confident in recommending that because I'm seeing it line up from not only from multiple mineral levels, but multiple mineral ratios. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then lastly, uh, see, we're almost done. Uh, lastly, iron to copper. Iron to copper, uh, this is, you're sitting pretty, pretty nicely here at uh, 0.55. Again, um, ideal for this is, is 0.9 to 1, uh, but the, the, the whole kind of bandwidth or spectrum there that is acceptable is 0.2 to 1.6. So when we look at that, um, if yours was maybe a little bit lower, I would tell you um, that thyroid disturbance is likely happening to a great extent. Right now, I would say thyroid disturbance is happening to some extent, um, and which is, uh, again, kind of a, a third thing that is in line, yet again, with that recommendation I made earlier, which is to say that since the adrenals need a little bit of support, um, and again, not because you're not treating your body well, but just because you're pursuing life from so many different angles. Um, since that's the case, I would say, you know, your adrenals are, of course, if they're in a weakened state, they're going to downregulate thyroid function to some extent. They, they, the metaphor I give, which, um, let's see what you think of this, is it's like driving your car, um, but you're driving with the e-brake either on or partially on. So... Yeah. Right. That's not cool. I'm not okay with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, thank you. No, no. Again, mostly, mo uh, most often I see, I see this be the case. Um, many people can, can benefit from this. So 
you're you're in a pretty good spot there but uh, yeah multiple things are lining up there now to increase your copper you know you can also eat you know foods that are high in copper so liver copper yeah. um, liver avocado dark chocolate leafy greens things like that so. you can have chocolate got it yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i know we went through a lot and we did it really quickly so yeah <laughs> can you also talk about my iron just underneath that on that toxic ratio is the iron my iron levels are a little bit low. Like, so do you mostly recommend, I mean, I'm, I'm eating a lot of, of these iron rich foods and I, part of me wonders just on some of my genetic predispositions, like with B12 and, you know, iron is affected by so many different things in the body. Like when you yep. see low iron levels, like what do you generally recommend? Like what's your, what, are, where does your thought process go? Like, okay, what, what are the things that could be causing this? Where yeah. if people that I'm not the only woman with lower iron levels. Oh, so like what not. do you recommend yeah. exploring on that, on how to get those up? Yeah. With, with iron, um, I, it's really one thing that I, I see often that I recommend is, um, is increasing stomach acid. So doing HCL before a meal, or if you want to do it naturally, it might, it may take a year, but doing, yeah. uh, celery juice and other ways to stimulate digestive fire is what it would be called in Ayurveda. But in general, you know, clinically we would say stomach acid, get it up because if you are consuming, um, you know, steak three nights a week, your iron level should be just fine. And I, you know, I know that, um, that you do, uh, include meat in your diet. So, because of that, I would say, yeah, that's one way. And then, you know, women that are menstruating do have to stay on top of that. So, yeah, there are things that antagonize iron in the body. One thing that I, I absolutely uh, say to avoid is from any any supplement company out there that is putting iron with something else, don't just avoid it because there's a lot that they don't understand about how to put minerals together if they're doing that. So if there's a multivitamin, which I doubt you're taking one, um, I never recommend them because they're a scattershot approach and they don't help anyone uh, like very well. And they can actually cause things. They can actually drive. Um, they're usually high in calcium. So they end up driving something out of the body that you need it, like magnesium or potassium or sodium. And then at the same time, you're, you're having this, what's called a um, antagonistic relationship between these minerals. So, uh, you know, when you put certain, certain minerals in the presence of others, bad news, you know, they, they just cancel each other out essentially um, oh. at, at best. And then at worst, sometimes you can get free radical oxidation. So then aging, you know, prematurely. So. Okay. So a couple of thoughts, uh, but liver is, is really, it's like consuming enough iron and then making sure you're absorbing it by having enough stomach acid. Those are, I mean, we can get more technical, but for most people, if they're going to remember something from this, you know, six months from now, I just want to keep it to a short list. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know I did uh, Charles Poliquin's uh, metabolic analytics and he talked about retain HCL quite a bit and he has a protocol that he would have people do where you go, uh, 200 milligrams, 400, 600, 800, and see if you felt a burning in your stomach yep. and everyone that he ever did with that, nobody ever felt any burning in their stomach, which means everyone's stomach acid is quite low. Um, he had two guys from some small tribe in Africa or something were the only ones that he ever found that ever got burning from adding the betaine HCL in, in, in their meals. So, um, that is something that I use regularly, but I, I, um, Charles himself, he said it could, it could take years for you to really start getting the benefit from this. So it's, it's something I have all my clients taking and take myself. So I'll just keep on taking that. And I love, I love <laughs> advice and liver. Yeah, yeah. So let's yeah. talk about liver for a second, because I want to love liver so bad, right? Because it's like all the things <laughs> B12, it's like, it's got everything yeah. I need. And, um, the flavor is so hard for me. Like I'm trying, I'm trying, but it's like, it's like, I can't brush my teeth enough times to get that flavor out of my mouth. So <laughs> I've just like gone to the desiccated liver pills, but I would, I'm still working on it. I know in the keto community in the carnivore world, there's this thing, I don't know if you've seen it, but they're like, they eat the liver frozen. So they just like literally just swallow it whole. 
<laughs> so they don't really have to taste it, which is kind of a good idea. It's like raw liver. It's probably amazing that way. So anyway, maybe I can, maybe I can try that. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, that's, that's really exciting and it's going to get a lot of headlines. I, I, I know that we digest really well whenever we, or we produce enzymes um, whenever we chew, which I, I know you know that, but uh, okay, as a funny pieces, thing, yeah, pieces. certainly. <laughs> What's that? Teeny pieces. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maybe, no, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm and, really, really trying to like liver. I think I just need to put my big girl pants on and just keep trying it until I like it. So. <laughs> I, well, I'm totally with you there. Something that's helped me is using a collection of different Indian spices. Oh, you know, I um, and that, that's really helped like a curry that's okay. like, that's a five spice that really helps. And then salting it and it's good with, I, I do like uh, green beans with it that are really fresh. Uh -huh. like, so you get some crunch because okay. it's, it has a texture that re I feel re pairs really well with crunch. Okay. Uh, but yes, it does have a texture. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. It is it's a process. Oh, and, and then one other thought on HDL, um, Please, uh, anyone out there listening, don't take it on an empty stomach ever. Uh, yeah. Take it uh, as you start your meal, is my yes. recommendation. Mm -hmm. Sarah has hers. Um, and then I, I step up really slowly, but I step up usually 200 milligrams would probably be ideal. Um, I, I step up using a 500 milligram cap because so many people are so deficient by the time I work with them typically. Now, mm -hmm. if someone's already in a place like you, I think, yeah, maybe stepping up slower is is a is a good place because you're if you're more on the bio ha biohacker, you know, you're already pre dialed in that sort of spectrum. Step up, you know, more slowly. You can take some of these larger doses. I know Isabella Wentz and her Hashimoto's uh, protocol um, in her book. There, she talked about stepping up 500 at a time as well. So, so how yeah. much do you take normally? Um, you know, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right now. I usually now where I'm at only take 500 milligrams with okay. a protein containing meal. So, cool. and if it's a really big meal, maybe I'll take two, but yeah, okay. uh, but it, it, it did. You're right. It took me a while to, to really, you know, move that for, okay. for myself as well. Okay, cool. That's a great, great, great tip. Um, uh, is there anything else like that stood out to you oh, yeah. that you'd like yeah. people to know? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, I wanted to go really deep here. Uh, so I also, I, I since you upgraded magnesium, I also since you upgraded sugar support because uh, of the manganese level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're low, you're not super low or anything like that, but manganese is really cool because, you know, it helps with blood sugar uh, and it helps with memory. It's uh, a key constituent for those. And it's one thing that I see that everyone is low in. And why? Well, the soil is low in manganese. Uh, going back to the iron thing, why do most why are most of my patients low in iron? Um, well, the the state today has half of the iron it used to have sixty years ago, eighty years ago, half. So right. even if you are, you're like, what? I, you know, I'm eating quite a bit of meat, quite consuming quite a bit of protein. Iron's pretty available in meat. You know, it should be good. So. That's why. Um, yeah. And is it true that they're using like the inorganic compounds that they're using to like refertilize the crops and soils, like the minerals are too large for our bodies to absorb in addition? Is that true? I've heard that. Yeah, um, that is something that I, I can't say I know for sure on. I just, you know, what I can say is that if you're supplementing regular iron, which I know some point later this year, we'll put out an iron supplement in yeah. nano form. Um, so in our, our in the the process I've developed it, all I mean iron doesn't taste very good. No, uh, stain things. This is a problem that you know uh, the R and D's done on it. I just I'm not super satisfied with the product. It works. It's just it's kind of a mess to use. To be honest, it really is. Yeah. Um, when I do take it, I take it with vitamin C. So I have some of mine that's not okay. available for for sale yet that I take um, because I'm also typically. And I've, I've done hair tests for my whole family. We have a predisposition uh, for low iron, it seems like. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Well, thank you. These are but, all. Yeah, iron is important. It supports thyroid function too. So. Cool. Uh, well, I'm, 
I'm glad I did this now. Cause like, I, I know and fully understand that I, I push my body. Right. And I, as much as I focus on nurturing and like, you know, skipping the gym and going for walks and doing hyper recovery modalities, I still know I'm pushing the needle. I know that. And as a health coach, I'm like, Oh, I'm always wanting to, you know, you never want to push it too far. Right. So it's so awesome to be able to do this test and be like, Hey girl, um, you might want to start supporting a little more before these drop any lower. Right. So super valuable to me. Thank you for doing this and for sharing with us this information and, um, where, where can people find, like, how can they take this test if they want to do it? Yeah. So they can find this at upgraded formulas forward slash products, or just go to upgradedformulas.com. Uh, that's upgraded with an ED and then formulas with an S. Um, and then, yeah, if they want to stay in touch with me, then um, actually I'll, I'll mention that in a second, but I wanted to come back. So yeah, recommendations just to run through that again. Yeah. Okay. Adrenal glandulars, um, grass fed, just making sure your omega threes are good. That's that's something that a lot of people forget. I'm sure you're on top of that though. Did want to mention it. Um, <laughs> sodium in divided doses, magnesium, okay. manganese, but um, upgraded sugar supports going to have some chromium, and some some zinc in there too, oh, cool. um, and that's that should be great. So uh, we have upgraded glucose support, which has vanadium. Your vanadium levels are pretty good. Um, so I, of the two, I wanted to send you that one. So okay, yeah, you can look out for that too. So when people come and do this test, so they order the test, I, I think I, I've looked on your website. Is there like, can they get a consultation? Yeah, after? yeah okay. absolutely. Yeah. So right now um, I am in the process of hiring a couple of nutritionists to, um, to take on that load as we're building the company. It's just from a yeah. time standpoint, uh, time's getting kind of used up. So yeah, yeah. someone can, can order a, a consultation there on the site as well. Uh, oh. The test is 127 uh, consults right now, um, although they're going up as uh, 109 to 197. Wow. Um, and then to to work with me directly, it's going to be more than that going forward. So pretty soon okay. I'll, um, I'll have a nutritionist that will uh, be able to handle that. Um, and that oh. way more and more people can... Uh, can take it and, and use it and maybe we'll be able to get the price down lower um, later on too. So, okay. because that's really the goal. I, I want to, you know, this has been so impactful for me. I want to mm -hmm. be able to help other people. Uh, this one test, I mean, yes, the minerals work incredibly well. Uh, but if you don't know what you need, mm -hmm. and this is a case for any mineral or any supplement or any food that you're taking, if you don't know where you stand with your health, I mean, what, what do you really know? Um, right. And yeah, so. Yeah. And, wait, yeah. So. Sure. With with this one, you know, with one test for about 130 bucks, you look at 15 elements. You look at 14 different additional elements. You look at eight different toxic elements um, and metals, and then seven significant ratios. So it's, you know, what that would be if you tried to do it with blood. I don't know. Uh, it would still be less accurate. I mean, it's it it just it's kind of confounding to me that more people don't use it as a starting place. So. Anyway, yeah. no, I'm so glad. Kind of, yes, definitely. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be able to bring this awareness to uh, my audience because like you and Dr. J were both like, Hey, you got to go with the hair testing. Like blood is just like a quick little snapshot of what just barely happened that day or recently, whereas hair is where we actually get the long-term indicators and you're getting all these ratios. So um, this has been really, really cool for me to find out. So thank you for introducing this to me. And then also like I just to let everybody know who's listening, we're going to do another one of these podcasts after I've been taking your supplements. And if you guys missed the first episode, what Barton specializes in is absorption. Right. So I'm, I've heard so many people in the health field say like, you are, you're not what you eat. You are what you absorb. Right. I, I've heard that a million times. And so it's like, here you go. <laughs> Would you like to actually absorb? And I love it. Even on the betaine HCL, you're, I mean, I can tell all the way you are like absorption, absorption, absorption. Obviously <laughs> it's like, what would be the point if we weren't actually using the things that we're putting in our body? So I'm um, very, very excited to test these out and then share with you guys my new ratios after I've been taking all of these amazing minerals. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barton. Really thank excited so to share this with everybody. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, guys.